Should your solar telescope be single stacked or double? Is it worth paying more to get a double stack unit? Let's dive in and see. To see the sun's chromosphere, which shows the amazing surface details and prominences on the limb, you need to isolate a specific wavelength of light and block out all the other wavelengths. An etalon works based on interference of light. Etalons consist of two partially reflective plates or mirrors very flat and set parallel to each other, forming an optical cavity. The spacing between the plates is on the order of microns. Light entering the cavity reflects multiple times between the surfaces, and only certain wavelengths interfere constructively and pass through. For solar applications, you want your etalon to pass less than 1 nanometer at 556.28 nanometers. Depending upon the type of etalon, to fine tune which wavelength is transmitted, they can be tuned by tilting the etalon, by changing the cavity spacing, by thermal tuning, or through air pressure adjustment. Combining two etalons in series narrows the band pass resulting in sharper contrast and more detail. However, there is a small penalty paid in brightness attenuation. There are three types of commercially available etalons. First, tilt etalons. These are typically found on the objective of a small telescope. A thumb wheel tilts the etalon, adjusting the wavelength. For cost reasons, these are usually limited to 60 millimeters or less objectives. It's the simplest and easiest to use etalon. You can buy a complete solar telescope with a tilt etalon for much less than $1,000. Next, we have pressure tuned etalons. These are typically placed at the user end of the telescope just before the blocking filter and eyepiece or camera. Due to their position in the optical train, these can be made smaller and thus are more cost effective. Changing the pressure changes the index of refraction of light, which in turn adjusts the wavelength. This design offers much more control and a larger sweet spot than tilt systems. It does require occasional readjustment. Third, we have solid, which are usually mica based etalons. These are positioned in the same place as pressure tuned etalons. They are smaller and more compact than other etalon designs, but require heating and power with a corresponding warm-up time before they can be used. The best ones operate around F30 or F40, which means you have to either add a barlow to your telescope or buy a solid etalon with a barlow built in, like a quark. In practice, this rules out full disk views because the field of view is so small. Power and wait times aside, the biggest concern about solid etalons is quality. Mica is difficult to consistently cleave in exactly the same way twice in a row. So there is normally a high pre-production rejection rate with only a few performing well enough to meet specifications. If you Google quark quality, you'll see pages and pages of links about so-called quark etalon lottery. There are good quarks out there for sure, and I have one, but buying one does entail some risk. Solid etalons are usually unbundled from the optical tube assembly, whereas tilt and pressure tuned etalons are generally part of an integrated solar telescope design. What does double stacking give you? Much better limb resolution, more contrast with filaments and surface structures, more of a 3D effect, and a finer degree of bandpass adjustment and tuning. Disadvantages of double stacking mostly is cost, and the image is slightly dimmer than with a single stack, which requires a longer exposure or more gain if you're imaging. Many experienced solar imagers will tell you they prefer to have a smaller double stack solar telescope than a larger single stack model. Some designs, notably the Lunt MT series, are designed to be upgradable, so you can buy a larger single stack system today and then upgrade to a double stack when your budget allows.
Solar telescopes are a lifetime investment, so choose wisely. I hope this was helpful, and thanks for watching.